fight between Nigel Benn and Argentine Hector Lascano. At this point, the Dark Destroyer has notched up 30 wins in 32 fights, but is desperate to get back his world crown. The commentators Barry McGuigan and Dave Brenner. Round super middleweight contest between Nigel Benn and the former Argentine middleweight champion Hector Lascano. And Lascano will be the first we see. Who are those guys? <laughs> Essex men wearing all. Lascano having his first fight since losing the Argentinian middleweight title, tail end of October, against Juan Meza. Ten round points lost, ten round title fights in Argentina. And here he comes. Well, there's his record. Now he's fight number 31 tonight. Not the most impressive of records, but there is no such thing really in my book uh, as, a, as a bad Argentine middleweight. Yeah, they're certainly tough guys. Uh, an indication by his weight is maybe that he's more suited to the middleweight division of 11 stone 6. Um, it would appear that uh, he is a rather small for a middleweight, super middleweight, but uh, he'll be a tough nut. Typical Argentinian is uh, action packed late punching but very durable fighters well for my money argentina produced one of the great middleweight champions of the post-war era in carlos monzon i had the privilege of watching him fight live when i used to be out in argentina and uh, monzon for me was one of the great one of the great the truly great middleweight champions of the world not of any era great fighter great fighter we're getting the ding-dongs for the ding big... Ding-dong bell. Oh, big band. No longer wants to be known as the Dark Destroyer. He's calling him Nigel's a bit of a come down from the Dark Destroyer. Got the bongs from Big Ben. And the entrance from from Ben is always uh, is always charismatic. In, in fact, I've, I've got to say that whether you whether you like the guy or whether you don't like the guy, he, he's perhaps more than any other fighter in Great Britain at the moment. He's, he's the only bloke who is guaranteed to fill every arena he fights in. Makes him a promoter's dream. The man has charisma in bucketfuls. He sure has. And uh, guys who can fill big halls are, are, in, are in short supply. And, uh, I know he's too modest to, to admit it, but the fella sitting to my left at the moment is, uh, is one man who could fill any arena he ever fought in. And you look back to the 70s with, with, with guys like John Conti, Dave Green, Alan Minter. Now they could, but maybe not so many boys nowadays can do that. Yeah, I wonder why that is, dear. But, uh, is it because of these multi titles now? I, I, I don't know. All, 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 all I remember is that when I came into boxing in, uh, in 1974 as a, as, as a commentator on radio, um, you used to get, as I said, you know, tops of the bills. Conti, Stracy, Minter, Boy Green, uh, and people would come to see them. You'd, you'd, you'd travel many a mile to see them. There was, I think, uh, uh, a little bit less boxing. Um, I don't think television came into it, but they had charisma. There was something about them. And this is no disrespect to the, to the boys who are building their careers now, um, but uh, for my money, there's, there's not quite uh, not quite the same pizzazz as there was 15, 15 odd years ago. Doesn't make it any less loved a sport from my viewpoint. And Nigel's course, keeping us all waiting he's here. Keeping us all, and of course, let's not forget there was a certain a certain individual called Muhammad Ali. 
yeah. around at that time, and everything seemed to sort of, sp you know, spin down off him. Certainly was the greatest, no question about that. He was indeed. Now, where is Nigel? Dark destroyer or no? Come on, Nigel, let's be having it. There we are. Very, very late, Nigel. But we'll forgive you. Well, off the record, just the two defeats. Michael Watson, Chris Eubank. And let us not forget the, the small matter of 13 one-round knockouts. Shaking hands with a lot of people on the way out there, very relaxed. Not often you see that. No. Normally head down, just think about what you're going to do. Oh, here we are, that'll be good. Oh, hardcore. There we are. Oh, a, a new nickname. I think I prefer Dark Destroyer, though. My Let's hear from Alan Hughes again. Ladies and gentlemen, Matchroom, in association with Jack Trickett, are proud to present the main attraction of the evening. This is an international super middleweight contest, a 12 stone over 10 rounds each of three minutes duration. Your referee for the contest is Mickey Van of Leeds and your timekeeper, Teddy Parnham of Pontefract. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing to you in the red corner with the red, the white and green shorts with 19 wins from 30 contests from Buenos Aires in Argentina, Hector Lascano! Small man, very chunky and solidly built. And his opponent in the blue corner with the black shorts with 30 wins from 32 contests, 27 inside the distance, the former WBO middleweight champion of the world. Well, Lascano, although he's lost eight of his 30 fights, Ladies he's only been stopped once, and that was by Jorge Victor Castro. Lascano scaled 11 stone 10 and a quarter pound. Nigel Ben, 11 stone 12 and a half pounds. I thank you. The weights, Lascano, 11, 10 and a quarter. Ben, 11, 12 and a half. Well inside the super middleweight limit of 12 stone, which really does suggest that both these boys are really nothing more than uh, slightly weighty middleweights. Mickey Van of Leeds is the man in charge. This is scheduled for 10 rounds at super middleweight. Moscano in the See white down, trunks down, with the red and green trim. Nigel Ben in black. Yeah, Moscano is small. Uh, he, he has fought at late middleweight. So he does look like a slightly podgy middleweight, and uh, he's going to be up against it here. Nigel can really bang. There's a great difference in height. And I don't think Nigel has fought too many people that much shorter than he is. It's different from him. He'll be able to tee off a bit easier. Ideally, what he should do here is use this as a good workout and get that jab going. But no one Nigel, he's going looking for the big one as soon as possible. with a couple of right hands that scan over. One of them landed. Sad day on the back of the shorts, was there. There was mum and dad in the last fight. Nigel really firing the power into his punches right from the opening bell. 
Mm. Scala having a go here. Typical Argentine. Tough yeah, as this comes. Absolutely. Major hasn't actually found his markers yet. Coming to the end of the first round. This guy's here to fight. Just to underline what we were saying about the weights, Ben coming in at 11, 12 and a half, and my point that neither of these boys are, are, are true super middles. When, when you take a championship weight limit, in this case of 12 stone, you take weight off to make the championship limit. You don't put weight on yeah. to build yourself up. You can uh, see by the spare around uh, exactly. the Scano's uh, cup protector that he is yeah. holding a bit of no, weight there. A, a, a genuine super middle would, would take fights at about 12-2, 12-3, and if he was fighting for a title, would come in at, uh, at 12 stone, 11, 13. And he's coming down from 13. Exactly, specific. exactly, for sure, for sure. So, you know, talk of Ben wanting to fight for the world light heavy title uh, uh, against seconds. Jeff Harding. That's not to say I don't think you'd beat Harding, it's you'd stand a very good chance of beating Harding, but to, to talk down. about campaigning at light heavy is, uh, is a bit dark. However, fighting off a bit more than he can chew. Yeah. Uh, having said that, uh, I know that Nigel has always had trouble making the 11 stone six. Uh, weight division and has you uh, said he uh, he had a, a great difficulty for the, for his title loss against Chris Eubank making well, he, weight. Yeah, but he he, he he lost too much too quickly. Uh, um, I mean that was just that was a poor poor training. Yes, well uh, you know we were talking about coming down the way, so he did have to come down to make 11 six, and he finds this easier to make, and he does look actually lighter tonight than he did the last night against um, Lindsay Morgan, yeah, but he's. Uh, yeah, you, you find it difficult to believe how he could put on an extra nine pounds and go up to uh, light heavyweight. I just I don't see that he has the frame to hold that extra weight. No, no way. Well, this guy is making a fight of it. He's coming into exchange with, with Nigel, but uh, he's a very short guy and solid. And it's always difficult to punch down on your opponent. It just looks like uh, Nigel is in a different league than this guy. I mean, to be honest, he's gone field, gone. Field out there. It looks like Nigel's. Really. It is, you're right. He's a tough guy. He's, he's a typical Argentinian. He, uh, he, he likes it on the inside. If he's stopping it. Uh, Mickey Van has spotted the gum shield. Is it? No. no oh, there, it, it, it is uh, the Scanos. Surprised. I thought it actually dropped out of Nigel's mouth, but uh, he should have known. As always, Ben absolutely superbly conditioned. Working in conjunction with Barry Hearn since his much publicised split with Ambrose Mendy. But essentially managing his own affairs now is Nigel. Oh, good right hand, left hook. This Lascano can take a dig. He's uh, he's had a couple of good shots. Uh, and yeah, well, like I said, believe me, he's got a hard night in yeah. front of him. He's like more to be dished out. Only been stopped once in his career, in 30, 30 fights, eight defeats. So, not you. Uh, I don't think he's ever fought a puncher like no, Nigel Ben. He has said not. That. No, he hasn't. Oh, good left hook to the body. Well placed. Nigel fighting intelligently. And Lascano covering up. This oh, guy, funny, this guy will fight, well, he'll no. fight back, yeah, for sure. No, full credit to him. These guys don't come to, uh, to Hitter and Patra about, they come in to fight. Argentina is noted for their durability. Oh. <laughs>
on the left hook, coming back. Angel, as I know, has been disappointed with the original opponent pulling out. And he just may find that this guy you have to be patient with him. It will take him a couple of good rounds. Well, I, I tell you, I, I don't know whether it still exists, but when I was out, when I was out in Buenos Aires, there was a fight venue called Luna Park. And you used to go there every Friday night, so they were the fights. And the fans there make the fans at the Forum in Los Angeles look even-handed. And if, if you went there and you didn't give your best as a fighter, my boy, not only were you fighting your opponent, you were fighting 10,000 lunatic Buenos Aires yes, boxers. You don't go fans. back to the dressing room. Uh-uh. So you, you, you come to fight. Yeah, ben unleashed a couple of good body shots here, and I like the way he placed them, that left hook right through the guard, right into the solar plexus, then switched his angle all his weight over on his right foot, and he doubled up that right hand a number of times. So I like that body work. But it's got to come firing back. Second down, round three. Now, this may be tempting fate horribly to say this, but Ben does, maybe because he's meeting a better class of opponent, I don't know, but he doesn't knock him over as regularly as, as he used to. Even boys like Milo was sort of stopped on. It wasn't, it wasn't a knockout. Yeah, well, uh, I don't doubt for one minute that he's lost any of his punching power. He's, uh, he really is a big puncher, uh, Nigel, and uh, it's maybe a case where he's not going looking for it so much anymore. He's trying to be a bit more intelligent, um, a bit more of a boxer than uh, an all-action swarming fighter. He's trying to think about his punches before he's unleashing them. Landed a couple of good left hooks to the body there and certainly hurt the scanner with the right yes. hand in the early part of this round. But have you no doubt, this guy can really bang and uh, still is a force to be reckoned with in, in the middleweight and super middleweight division. Doing some good work for the body, is Ben. Yeah, he, he, the way he's to, he should fight this guy, he should keep him on the end of the jab and, and keep him at, at, at a distance and, and put his back to the rope, pin him on the ropes. He's an aggressive fighter, so push him back, push him off balance, and just tee off on him instead of allowing him to get in close because that's where the scanner works best. There's where he should be letting his punches go. Keep him off balance and keep banging him. You can see himself teeing himself up with the right hand. He should use that jab instead of just pawing, he should snap it out. Oh, good left hook. Beautiful. Got him. And down. Yeah. Is this camera going to get up here? Yes, up at eight. Mickey Van takes a very close look, waves a fight on Ben. In for the finish. Nigel, just have to be patient here, finish this in style. Still going wild and crazy. And Lascano coming back at him, but Ben right gets him again with a chopping right hander. That's the end of the fight here. The referee won't let him take it anymore. I don't get think, think he's going to make it. No, he's not. Ben by count out. One left hook is a double left hook to the chin, but it was the second one that did the damage. And a nice clean finish to that fight. And as we've said, this guy hasn't been stopped before like that. And he just still got that power, I can tell you. Well, Lascano still on the canvas. Ladies and gentlemen, in the two minutes, 35 seconds of round three, by a count out. Nigel Ben is the winner. So Ben KOs Lascano in three. I'm glad to say that Lascano, you saw yourselves there, is back up on his feet. Let's take a look at how that fight ended, Barry. Puts him back to the ropes here. Chop tries a right hand. Right hand again. Now what's this double left hook? He actually he stopped a good left hook himself. That's the first left. 
That was a great left Perfect. hook. Perfect. Right on the chin, and the second one actually done the damage. And corrections, the first left hook done the damage. And this is the chopping right hand. The scanner comes at him, and he just sort of sidesteps him and pops him with the right hand. Bang, that's it. Whack. So, nice to see Lascano up and about. Ben, full of praise for his vanquished opponent. Nice gesture, nice to see. Well, we're going to be hearing from Nigel in just a moment. But uh, as you probably are aware, <laughs> the strong boy. There's, there's old Hector, as you're probably aware, the British Boxing Board of Control don't allow interviews in the ring anymore. So we've got to get Nigel Ben out of the ring before we talk to him. Let's join him now with Gary Newbon. Well, last time, Nigel, you met a, a tall boxer, this time a very short one. So what's your verdict this time? First of all, what's your verdict? My you verdict... Start giving me a hard time to take your glasses off. <laughs> what's your verdict, first of all? I don't know, I think... First round, um, I don't know. I try to come and bomb him out because I know, I know that you know all Argentinians they like to have a have a war. But I mean, um, him being five foot four, it's very hard for me to try to pin him. Then Graham just said, step back a bit in the third round, and he said, don't try and blow him out, just pick and try and chop down a tree, and that is, you know, try to work his body. And I know I hurt him, but I thought, well, let's just keep on doing what we're doing. And it's very hard trying to work someone that's so, so short. That's the first time I've ever fought anyone that small. What, did it do you any good? I mean, you're not likely to meet them that small very often. I'm not. <laughs> I think they're, they're much, much trickier because they can crouch right down low. And, you, you know, the way I usually swing is just about the right level, but him, you have, to, you have to step down. And then I'm fighting at his side. And then, you know, he caught me with some shots, but that's boxing. Good finish. You must have been pleased with that. Um, it'd, be, it'd be good if I could see it, but um, I don't know. I go home and see what it's like, and then I work on it. Now I'm trying to be more relaxed and instead of um, Fran Hell forever. But I knew, um, like when I fought Lindsay Morgan, everyone was giving me a hard time. I knew I had to box Lindsay Morgan. I know for a fact that, you know, it wasn't going to be over in three, four rounds. I know it's going to be a 10 round fight. And this guy, um, I knew he was tough, I knew he can't have a war. So I thought, yeah, there's no point in me trying boxing because they'd take it all day. So I thought, let's have a tear up. But it was a good night for you, but we want to see you in with the real big matches, obviously. now. Well, you know, you know who I'm looking for. Yeah, you're looking... I mean, spell it out. E-U-B-A-N-K. Is that, is that the right, how you spell it? Yeah, is that fight going to happen? Because he doesn't seem too keen about it next June. No, you know, as much... No, and they're on TV now. I'd like to say, like, you know, as much as it, I hate him as a person, which I do, but as a, as a boxer, I've got respect for him. And, I mean, people have to give the guy a break. It's true what he said in the papers. We always back losers. And people want to give him a break. All right, he's, to me, he's horrible. But he's a champion. And that, he needs some respect. And people should give it to him. But outside the ring, I don't really know. But as a boxer, he's, he's a, good, a good fighter. Good craftsman, very tricky. But I can deal with him now. OK, we look forward to that. Good night for you tonight. Good finish. Well done. Good night. Thank you very much.